While I'm a theoretical physicist, I would like to perform an experiment now. Well, I would need your help to answer the following question. Well, I'm sure that uh, this question does not make sense to you. Nevertheless, I will urge you to make a guess as to which choice, either A, B, C, or D, is the correct answer. You may be lucky in your guess. Right? Okay, wait. Uh, well, by a raise of hand, who thinks that A is the answer? Okay, good. How about B? Thank you. What about C? Well done. What about D? Great. Okay. Well, I'm going to decrypt the question later. This is an encrypted text. From what I see, it's about 25% each for each choice. So let me decrypt the question. So this is the question. What is not associated with luck? Well, you can see that A, coincidence, serendipity, surprise. They are associated with luck, so they are not the answer. Certainty is not associated with luck. It is the answer. Now, everyone must have felt that those who have selected C, who raised their hand for C, right? You must be very lucky to make the correct guess. <laughs> now, but what if I would have shown you at the outset this question, what is not associated with luck? I believe every one of you would have chosen C, right? And that would be, I presume, 100% of you. And none of you would then say that you are lucky to have made that choice. And now, what if I would show you a partially decrypted version like this? Now, in this case, you will be guessing between B and C. And I suppose that the percentage will be 50% each. Now, you see that, interestingly, if you were to guess correctly this time, you will not claim to be luckier than you would have guessed correctly in the previous instance. Now, in this sense, I would say that it is possible to quantify luck rationally. When the uncertainty is greater and you make a correct guess, well, you would have better luck. Conversely, when the uncertainty is greater, you have a higher chance to guess wrongly and hence, more likely to have bad luck. And notice that information can alter your luck in a quantitative way. Now, there is information here, right? Although not total information, but partial information. So, through the provision of partial information, it is possible to increase your luck, good luck, from 25% to 50% now, right, in this case, and also to decrease your bad luck from 75% in the first instant to 50% in this case. So it is the main theme of my talk to show you how information is essential to the luck that you may have. And for, for this, well, we need to understand the source of uncertainty and randomness. This normally comes from two sources. The first source, the interaction of a large number of elements in the system such that complete information of all details of the system is not possible. Examples are motions of gas molecules in the air or even the price of stocks as a result of shares, millions of shares traded per day. And the second source, the uncertainty as a result of the system being nonlinear and chaotic. And this is the type of uncertainty I will be talking about at length today. Now, what do we mean 
by uncertainty and randomness in a chaotic system. Let me now illustrate with a chaotic pendulum. In this simulation, I have a chaotic pendulum and a copy of the pendulum starting at about the same initial condition. As the motion progresses, you will see that the pendulum and this copy, initially close together, start to diverge. And if you were to look at the motion of each pendulum, you would notice that it seems unpredictable. Now, this is very strange. Because a pendulum system is a deterministic system that obeys Newton's law. And predictability is the trademark of a deterministic system. So what happens here? Now, what you observe here is the phenomenon of chaos that is discovered by the American meteorologist Edward Lorenz. Now, Edward Lorenz had found that non-linear deterministic system can display sensitivity to initial conditions, from which arises behavior that is random. And one important outcome of this research is that long-term weather prediction is not possible. Now, there is an important, a very useful metaphor to, to the idea of sensitivity to initial condition as coined by Edward Lorenz. It is known as this, the butterfly effect. There is the flap of the wing of a butterfly in Singapore can cause a tornado in New York. And in fact, there is a 2004 American science fiction psychological thriller of the same title, which tries to show the same effect through the life of a college student, Evans, played by Ashton Kusher. In the movie, Kusher had to time travel back in, to a moment in time to adjust his initial condition so as to attain a certain desired outcome in his future. But each time, the future outcome is so unpredictable and not what he desired that he had to go back time and again to try to control his future. And with this, you may bring to mind that in our life, there is also sensitivity, dependence to initial condition to a certain extent. While you wake up every morning with slightly different initial condition, like for example, doing similar things like brushing your teeth, the events ahead for the day seems rather unpredictable and even utterly different between days. Now this, in, in fact, re implies the presence of nonlinearity in your daily system. Now let me illustrate this with a more concrete example. Now for this, I would like to first clarify the meaning of a deterministic system. It is a system that operates by acting a set of well-defined rules on a given initial condition. Over here, you will see that I've chosen the initial condition to be an irrational number, 1 over square root 2. And another slightly different initial condition that differs by 0 0.0048923. And for this deterministic operation, I will need to express these two initial conditions in the form of a binary digits, that is, bit 0 and 1, that, which is the form used in the computer. I've underlined the bits that are the same in the two initial conditions to show that the numbers are close together. Next, the deterministic operation that I'm going to act on these two initial conditions comes in two steps. 
Now, the first step is to shift all the binary states to the left by one position. The second step is to observe the digit to the left of the decimal point. And if it is a 1, change it to a 0. And if it's a 0, leave it as a 0. Now, the, sy the system that I described is deterministic because the two steps are well-defined operations, and it is the second step that makes the system nonlinear. It is like 1 to 0, like a decision step. Now, after the first one iteration, the initial conditions in the white, as shown in white, has changed to the state that is shown in red. Now, observe the bits. These bits have moved to the left. And as you move to the left, due to the first step, this bit 1 is to the left of the decimal point. And it is changed to 0 based on the second step. But it is also output as 1 here. These two steps are done for both the, the initial condition the first one and the one that's close to it. And after the two steps, you will see that the difference between them increases. We continue this iteration, and as we iterate the system, you will see that the number of bits that are in common reduces, the difference between them increases, and so on, and so on, this looks very similar to the chaotic pendulum that I show you. And by the sixth iteration, this is the last time they op they, the two system, the two initial conditions output the same bit. And by this stage, they become pretty uncorrelated, such that the system behavior no longer correlate with each other. And by the seventh iteration, you would have observed what we call the sensitivity to initial condition. Initially, they are close together, initial condition, but by this time, they are utterly different. Furthermore, if you look at the possible future outputs of this system, you look at the bits 0 and 1 that appear, have the form of a random sequence. Now, this is an archetypal example of how chaotic system can give rise to randomness. And if you were to map the bit 1 to head and the bit 0 to tail, you will notice that the output of a chaotic system has the form of a coin toss. Right? This is the outcome like a coin toss. And it is interesting. Why? Because we know that primarily a coin toss is a prime example of uncertainty and luck. And we can start to see here that how chaotic system is related to luck. But more importantly, the output of a chaotic system depends on its initial condition. So if we have sufficient information of the initial condition, we would be able to predict the output and, as a result, have a better chance to have good luck. But in practice, having precise initial condition is impossible. But nonetheless, if we would have, for example, six bits of this initial condition, it would already help us to reduce uncertainty and improve our guess. And the last part of this talk, I'll show you how this is actually being done. Now, the knowledge of initial condition can enhance our ability to go against the odd, have challenged scientists to go against the ultimate of Lady Luck, the casino. Right? Now, the ruler wheel of the casino is well known to follow Newton's law. And the idea is to guess the octant where the ball finally lands. 
by capturing the states of the ball, such as its initial position and velocity, and also taking into account the state of the wheel, as well as its peculiarity. Now, this challenge is taken up by Professor Edward Top, who was who blew up the idea when he, he was a graduate student in UCLA, and also Professor Claude Shannon in the 1960s. Through their research, they found that by making use of the initial condition, they can increase the chance of selecting the winning number and gain a 44% advantage over the casino. After performing extensive analysis on the rural system, they, the duo proceeded to, to design a computer which has 12 transistors and was of the size of a pack of cigarettes. They input data to the computer by pressing their big toes on micro switches which is hidden in their shoe. They have thus created a wearable computer that can be taken away from view and as they engage the Las Vegas Casino in 1961. Edward reported success on the Las Vegas trial whenever the computer is working, but it was abandoned because they have difficulty hiding the wiring and for fear of backlash by the mafia who was operating the gaming industry at that time. And this challenge was later taken up again by Professor Don Farmer and Professor Norman Puckett in the 1970s by building an operational wearable computer using next generation of technology. And interestingly, Professor, uh, Professor Doyle Farmer and Professor Norman Puckett were graduate students at that time when they embarked on this venture. Like Top and Shannon, they built a tow operated computer to predict the area where the ball will land in the roller wheel. Although they face hardware difficulties, they managed to win against the house of the order of US $10,000 with the aim of using the winnings to fund scientific research. Their exploits were captured in the book The Eudemonic Pie and also chronicled in the TV series Breaking Vegas. And recently, the technical details of how to exploit initial condition to enhance the odds against the rural system was published in a journal article by Professor Michael Small of University of Western Australia and Professor Chi Kong Te of the uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic University in the Chaos Journal. Well, currently, with today's technology, the ruler prediction algorithm and data input can, in fact, be implemented easily by means of apps and camera in the smartphone that you have today. So finally, well, i end the talk by saying that, wow, it's a human spirit to go against the lady luck. So now I would like to have an opportunity for one of you to come and challenge Lady Luck. So I'd like to have a volunteer to come up, to raise your hand. There are three boxes here. One box has a big prize, the other has a small prize. So you take home what you have. So who would like to volunteer? Okay. Thank you for volunteering. No problem. Okay, so now first you need to select one of the box that you think there's a big prize. Uh, what do you guys think? This one? <laughs> okay, this one. good. So now I'm going to open up one box, okay? And let me open up this one. Okay, I'll open up the box for the small prize. Okay? Yep. Now I'm going to ask you, I'll give you a chance to change your mind. 
Okay, so we like to stick on to this one or this one. You're going to change? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to pick this one? Yes. Okay, so before um, he op we open to reveal the truth, let me say something about this game, right? Now, before uh, I open up this one and you choose, the chance that you win is 33.3% because it's one third each, right? Mm -hmm. Now, because I open up, okay, actually I, exp I can give you information. Now, by exploiting that information, well, through detailed calculation, by changing to improve your chance from 33.3% to 66.6%. So therefore, by choosing this one, you have a higher chance to win, right? Okay? But nonetheless, we know that this thing is a luck thing, right? Okay? So therefore, I'll let you pick it up. Drum roll. Oh! <laughs> Right. Sneaky. <laughs> there is a chance. Yeah. So this is what we mean by luck. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can have. I, I got to know. I got to know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ah. <laughs>